Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Ian Arbuck, and today I'll be joined by Stella Cannon so we can share our experiences with Tales from the Borderlands. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO23. So I suppose that before we really start like reviewing this thing, we should probably tell everybody kind of an overview of what it is. Um, so it's a video game. But it's a very specific kind of video game. Um, it is an episodic, choice-driven, story-based game, which is kind of a mouthful. Yeah. So what do each of those pieces mean, Stella? Um, there's not really much of you controlling the character. I mean, you're making the decisions for the character while well, the character goes and does it. Like, you don't... It's not like... I don't know what they're called... What are what are the, the oh the that, dialogue options? But yeah, no, well, no, just like that style because like I don't. What's the other side called? Like in Call of Duty, how you're running around and shooting things. What is that called? An action game, where you have like full agency and you can like yeah move around freely yes, within yes, the it's not environment. Like that. Yeah, yeah. They're not. I mean, there's times where you have to hit a button, but it's not. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's it's much <laughs> less gameplay focused and more story, story. focused. Yeah. Yep. Um. So this particular one is set on and around Pandora, which is the same planet as the rest of the Borderlands games. Um, We've got two player characters. Um, Reese is our middle management guy from Hyperion, which is like the big evil corporation. And and then you have Fiona, who is a... She's Pandoran, right? Yep, yep, she's from Pandora. She's from Pandora. And she's kind of like a... She's a... A con artist. Yeah, con artist. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, they end up, through a complicated series of events, they end up like having to work together to try and hunt down this vault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so they all, yeah, they all become vault hunters, but kind of an unusual version of vault hunters because most of the vault hunters that we've seen in the series are the ones that you're playing as. Um, and so, you know, they're much more like combat focused. In the yeah. other games, but this one is more about like, yeah, using using kind of clever tricks and stuff to to solve your problems. Um, most of the core cast that we're getting to know in this game are original characters. They don't appear in any of the other games, um, but we do have some of the characters from the core Borderlands series um, that like make appearances occasionally, um, but they usually don't stick around for a really long time. True. Yeah. yeah. So so we got to see a few uh, of, like, the Vault Hunters from the other two, like, Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. Ian knows about this. Um, I haven't played them. Yeah. <laughs> the Well, I mean, you you saw the ones from Borderlands 2 when you were choosing which character you wanted yeah, to play yeah, yeah. as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Zero was one of those choices, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he, and he shows up in, yeah. uh, in Tales from the Borderlands. Zero's adorable. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about a few different aspects of this game. Um, and let's start with the story because the story is the most important one for this game in particular. How do you feel about the story? I liked it. I didn't like what I did to my character, but <laughs> um, they do. They I don't they, regret playing the game. They make you make some pretty tough choices, yeah, don't they? They do, and the whole game is then based on what you decide. It mm-hmm. it chooses your fate. Yeah, as with many other like Telltale games, they'll when whenever you make a dialogue choice or like a big decision or it's something, like, blah blah blah, we'll remember this. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty popular trope to, for people to make fun of. Um, I, I especially like it when they're talking about like when one of the robots will remember yeah. something. It says they will store this in their <laughs> memory banks. Oh, I never even saw that. I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was, so, so a lot of times in these, like, kind of choice-driven games, um, they kind of, they make it seem like your choices are going to make a big difference, but then a lot of times, like, by the end, they've kind of converged everything, you know, Mm -hmm. and, like, like, everything that would have happened anyway is still happening no matter what choices you made, you know? Um, like, one of the big examples of a game that, that a lot of people complained about that with was, like, Mass Effect 3, right? Because they had spent, like, two three whole games um building up all of these different choices that you can make and then at the very end it was like it you 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 still had like the exact same three choices no matter what you did Jeez. um but with this one um i was pretty darn impressed with how 
many things we did throughout the rest of the episodes that came into into play in the final episode, you know? Um, so you remember when we were, like, assembling our final team? Yeah. There were there were several people who were unavailable to us because, because we, we had Because we killed made, them. Yeah, well, oh. well yeah, or, or we, like, pissed them off so much that they didn't want to have anything to do with us. By the way, when we were playing this, I was Reese. Ian oh. was Fiona. Yep, yep, we kind of so, split up the, yeah. those two characters, yep. Um... Oh, and it's definitely important to note that those two characters are uh, play the roles of unreliable narrators because they're both telling the story of their adventure to another person. Yeah. And and a lot of times they will disagree on the details of what happened in a particular case, you know? Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll get to see, like, the same scene twice um, from two different perspectives, which is pretty entertaining. Yeah. Because, like, one of them will... Um, embellish a little bit to make themselves look really good, and then yeah. the other person will, like, dispute it, and then we'll see, like, you know, the person who was pr telling us that they were being all heroic, like, just blubbering on the floor or something, like, helpless. <laughs> and also what I liked about the game was, like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't like, it was serious, but it wasn't serious. Right. It wasn't, like... It's very comedic. It wasn't, like, I don't know, like, that game would have been actually hella boring if it wasn't funny. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. And that's, that's, um, it definitely replicates the sense of humor in the other Borderlands games pretty mm -hmm. well, you know? Um, sometimes when you've got like a different writing team, I think it was a different writing team who did this than who do the regular Borderlands games. Can they make a game? They did good. Who, the, the yeah. people at Telltale? Yeah. Well, yeah. So they, Ooh. um, they actually do a lot of games that are based on other companies' franchises, you know? Yeah. So they did, like, The Walking Dead. They've done um, Batman. Oh, that's the same. Yeah, this and... is the same company yeah, that okay, made that them. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, if you are listening to this uh, soon after we publish this episode, which should be uh, July 22nd, 2017, um, you should be able to go and uh, check out a Humble Bundle that has a bunch of Telltale games um, being sold for pretty cheap. So that's a good deal. How did you feel about the controls of the game? The controls? Um, the controls were fine. It was simple. I mean, it was like the only real thing you had to do was... The, okay, there was like a few tiny parts where you're walking. You're only walking. Mm. And you can look around. Well, okay, well, this was a Reese thing since Reese had his bionic eye. And like it came in use... Oh yeah, where you have yeah, to like use to the eye scan the to thing. scan some things. Yeah, yeah, that happened. Um, or like whenever you're trying to get out of trouble, you would like swipe left, swipe right to dodge. Yeah, I yeah I didn't like the way that they heavily relied on quick time events. Oh yeah, you know, in X, this X, X X X X X. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was the whole. That was half of me. Yeah, and then and and I I would say that like the you know quick hit the left button or the right button, yeah. you know, uh, like I would say that that counts as a quick time event as well. Um, though there, there was one exception where I really enjoyed that, which was the final battle in the last episode. Oh yeah, no, that thing was like one of those dancing games where it's like <laughs> right foot up. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was more similar to like a fighting style game, like Mortal Kombat or something like that. You can play Mortal Kombat. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. And I, and I think that that's what they were going for because the, um, the characters in the game had these controls in front of them. Was That was like oh a single God, yes. joystick and four buttons, which is very typical uh. for like a fighting game setup. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I, th I thought the controls were okay. Um, I really liked how we were playing it on PC, but we were playing it uh, from the couch, right? So we were using a controller. And the game like seamlessly switched between having like the controller prompts versus like the mouse and keyboard prompts, you yeah. know, depending on which one was the last one that you used. Mm -hmm. um, so like if we if we use like the keyboard to take a screenshot or something like that, it would change to showing us like mouse and keyboard style controls on the on the screen. Um, that was my fault, though. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and that was, but it worked out fine because as soon yeah. as I like hit the uh, the joystick it went on back to, the controller, yep, yeah, it went back to showing us the controller stuff. So they they like they definitely they took that into consideration. Indeed, indeed, um, which is important in this day and age. How about the visual style of the game? Oh, it was so. I think it was super pretty. Oh my gosh, the intro scenes. Oh yeah, they had really good intro scenes, like. Ooh. Yeah, so one of one of the big like hallmarks of Borderlands games is is like the 
musical title sequence that they have at the beginning of the game. Um, you know, everybody knows that uh, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked is like the, the song that they used uh, in the first game, you know. Um, Telltale took that concept and applied it to each and every single episode of this series. So all five episodes we got like about half an hour in, we got a musical title sequence that was like two minutes long yeah and they were really classy they were like i could just watch that if that (laughs) was the whole game i'd be fine with that i'm sure i'm sure that there's somebody who went like put together a youtube compilation of all those kinds of things yeah yeah um my favorite one was from episode two um when yeah well i won't i won't tell i won't spoil what we were doing in the game at that time but it was it there there was a lot of slow motion stuff flying around and yeah and and the the song that they chose was really really cool um and i uh i actually when i first heard that song in the game i was like oh man i got to add that to my playlist so i actually i i do listen to that song uh on a fairly regular basis even today and they they definitely replicated like the visual style of the borderlands series really really well um, because Borderlands, I, th- I think, was one of those first games that tried to go for like a graphic novel kind of, you know, comic book visual style mm-hmm. with like dark black back borders around all of the objects, you know, um, and using cell shading to have kind of this much flatter look. It was really cool though, because like even like Batman games, they don't do that. No, they well, make it more realistic. Yeah, I, in... I think the, yeah the the Batman um, Arkham series definitely goes for like a realistic vibe, so mm-hmm. more more like the movies. Um, I I wonder what the Telltale game looks like. I haven't actually played it. Is there one for y- it? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm yeah. Um, they have. Oh, we should play it. They have one series. they one season out. Um, and I think actually the first episode is like free, so we could try it out. Uh, and see you know see if we like it before. Oh yeah, I'm waiting for my. Season two of this game. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, they, I'm gonna say something about the end, but it doesn't really end. Well, let's yeah, let's okay, let's leave spoilers until a, Is that a spoiler? few minutes. I don't from know now. if I really spoiled it. Well, if, I mean, if we talk about the ending, yeah, it'll be a spoiler. Okay. That's for sure. Well, I didn't say anything. I just said it doesn't really end. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, let's finish off before we get into spoilers. Let's finish off by talking about the like the voice acting in the game. Oh my god, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, they actually had voice actors, so it wasn't like <laughs> crappy. Hi, my name is. It, it was. Wait, they. <laughs> so, how many games have you played where like they don't have real voice actors? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I always go online. I never play the story mode. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they had, uh, some pretty big names in there. Troy Baker was, uh, was Reese. Um, I mean, Chris Hardwick isn't known for his voice acting. He's a comedian, but he was, he was, uh, playing Vaughn and I was really excited about that. Um, is that that guy? Is he the talking dead guy? Yeah. Yeah. That's who he Chris is. Hardwick is. Ah! <laughs> He's so, oh my God. He was on America's Got Talent like two days ago. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. He was the judge. Oh my god! Um, yeah, he's pretty good. He's really good at hosting. He is. those kinds he has of so like, many game shows. shows. Um, yeah. He has so many shows. He has a talk show for like twenty different TV shows, and he just has a talk show. Yeah, where he probably talks about at, TV shows at midnight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the McElroys are going to be on that in a few, in a, like next week, I think. So uh, it's okay if I get, if I get famous, we can go. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what else. Yeah, the the who does the voice for Jack? I'm not sure. Uh, we'd have to look that up. But it's the same person who does, like, the voice acting in the regular games. So. Yeah. Yep. Well, I hope to God they don't change the... Ew, that'd be ugly. It's happened before. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> I remember from, my, like, my childhood when we were watching, like, the uh, the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, like, TV show or whatever. <laughs> and it's, like, a completely different voice actor. Um for for Buzz Lightyear and that that really threw me off as a kid. Um oh, of course, Patrick Warburton is in this game. <laughs> he's uh, the guy who voices Crunk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um what's his name? Vasquez. Yep. He's uh he's actually one of the antagonists in this game. He yeah. does a really good job at it too. He's he's, he's... Uh, very uppity and he looks like Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but he doesn't have the arm. He had he had the same ego. Mm-hmm. same ego <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, definitely very important to have quality voice acting in a game that relies so much on on the story and the characters. Too, because I feel like it's harder acting when you're not physically being the right. character mm-hmm. and expressing what they're expressing. Well, ha- have you, so have you ever seen, like, like, footage of... Yeah, I know. They do in, the thing. They're yeah. like, oh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they act out kind of what yeah. they're what their emotions are supposed to be while they're doing it yeah because that'd be really hard to do without doing that oh this reminds me um in so in a lot of games like this where you've got like dialogue choices and stuff um a lot of times like the game will present you with the dialogue options um and then but then like for the most part it doesn't really matter which dialogue option you know you choose um and i did sense a little bit of that in this game like if if you like sometimes you had the option of like saying something that would achieve your goal or like you know another one of those might be really stupid yeah um but like even if you accidentally choose the stupid option or something like that usually there's somebody else in the scene who will like save your butt and you know achieve the goal that you were going for well there was a anyway. few times um while we were playing i died once that's true yeah you can I did die. die you yep. can die don't yeah well Ian got mad at me half the game because i was picking really like I've been a smart ass. <laughs> well, the, well, that's the thing, though. Um, like he thought I wasn't gonna do good at it. He was like, "Don't, don't say that. We're gonna die." And I wasn't dying. I was actually doing pretty good. I was. Getting... And th- and that's the thing. Like <laughs> you were you were playing Reese as a yeah. very different personality than like I would have, right? Yeah. And and I was I was pretty impressed with the way that the game allowed us to do that, and it felt pretty natural. Um, without like kind of breaking the storyline of the game you know you could go through the game either as a reese who's like a total pushover right and like does everything that everybody tells you to or you could go through uh you know as this guy who's like trying to take charge and you know i don't know i was like really i was doing it i was trying to do it from like the character the actual character himself Mm -hmm. and yeah I messed around, kind of. I was messing with the character back and forth. It it wasn't a good idea at the end, but <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna talk about the characters? Yes. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So do we do we want this to be our spoiler zone? Sure. All right. So yeah, if you uh, have been listening to this uh, review and you don't want spoilers, um, then you should probably stop listening now because everything that we say from now on is gonna have spoilers. Um. So yeah, if you're if you're leaving us, uh, then have fun playing the game because it's a great game. Or you can uh, watch uh, us playing the game because we live streamed uh, the whole thing uh, over the last five weeks, um, and you can check that out over on our YouTube channel, Disappointingly Dry. Um, but if you are sticking with us now, uh, get ready for some spoilers. Okay. Um. Should we just okay? Should we talk about our characters? Okay. Sure. So I was. I was Reese. Mm-hmm. Um, so why did why did you want to play Reese so badly? It it was just his personality. I love his personality. He, I don't know. He was like kind of snarky, kind of like, oh, what'd you call it? I don't know. He kind of reminded me of myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, like seriously, like the self esteem was showing. Mm. Didn't lack self esteem at all. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. At the beginning, he gets. Put as the janitor. Yeah. And he thought that was bullshit because he should be the one who's in charge. He should. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, because he, he was going for a promotion. And then, yeah. And then his rival gets the promotion, Vasquez, and demotes us. And that's that's actually how it all begins. That <laughs> it goes downhill from there mm-hmm. <laughs> very quickly. Um. So I liked the how you took charge like right away, and you were like, oh. Vasca- or I mean, um, Vaughn and Reese, you know, they're being portrayed here on the screen as best buddies, but clearly they're secret lovers. And so that oh, yeah, was no. like our, our thing from that then was, on was that like... That was totally like... <laughs> oh my gosh, if you watch your playthrough, there is some gay moments. I am... I'm not lying, like... <laughs> I mean, he ends up saving them. Oh, Vaughn, Vaughn does. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And like... There's like a scene where they them two are hugging for like a fucking minute. I really enjoyed um how much Jack was into Vaughn's abs. Oh yeah. That um, was really funny. Jack. Like Jack. He, he could not get over that. Also, 
we decided that if we were players in the game, Ian for sure would have been Vaughn. Oh, right. We took this quiz. Yeah. <laughs> Ian would have been Vaughn. I would have been Jack. I'm not surprised I would have been Jack. So, okay. So then that whole Jack scenario thing came in. And then we have Jack with us. I was like, oh, he's hot. But then Ian was like, oh, my God, don't trust him. He's the bad guy. I don't trust him. And I'm like, no, I'm going to play with him. I'm going to go along with what he says, and we're going to see what happens. And you had a really good point that Reese, like, in those scenarios probably would have gone along with it because oh, yeah. he, you know, he, he looked up to Jack. He really did. He, he, that, he, Jack is the person he wanted to be for, like, that entire time. So, And actually, for a while, we did not have a problem. Yeah. Everything was actually working. He saved us a few times. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out in the end that um, he was just saving us so that he could get up to the space station and, you know, get his metal skeleton body so that he could put that into people's bodies and then take over with the like, then, robot zombie army. And then that's when you get the... um. That's when you get the option to say yes to him or say no. I, really... I said no. I wonder what would have happened if we had said yes. We should have said yes because you see what happened next was Jack coming to kill my ass. He really wanted to kill me. Like, oh boy. Oh, that was... I was like, oh shit, I oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe, was... maybe we should play like through those last couple of episodes again oh and see god, how it would have yeah. changed. Oh my god. And then... Oh, just the aftermath of all of him dying and stuff. And then Jack actually, not Jack, freaking Reese basically ends up being Jack. Like Jack even mentions when he's dying that you talk about me killing all of these people that I've killed, but you've killed the same amount. Mm -hmm. And he like makes a point saying, who's really the, the bad guy here, me or you? Right. And Oh no! And although, although, I don't think that Reese really knew fully that the space station was going to crash if he turned off all of the power. You know, he just wanted to cut power to the station so that Jack wouldn't have control of the station anymore. And then, as it turns out, the entire space station crash landed, and uh, yeah. a bunch of people died. And then, once you're out of that scene, all of a sudden, my clothes are black. Right. His outfit changes. It's like the most like. He looks good in it. <laughs> Yeah, he does. He really does. Like, I think it's all like angsty. You get <laughs> angsty Reese, who's now the leader. You know what I'm I'm a little and bit confused about actually is he he talks about how he took like the the certificate that says that he yeah. owns Atlas, and then he goes off to some like Atlas. Um, well, no, he goes with facility. Vaughn. Well, no, like b b before they met yeah, up, yeah. you know. Um, like, he went off to this Atlas facility, he patched himself up, um, you know, made some more prototypes and whatever, but it's like, okay, so you own Atlas, but, like, what does that mean? Who works for you? Did he go and hire a bunch of people to work at this new Atlas corporation, or, well, like, what was he doing? I feel like, well, remember, Vaughn was like, everybody knows that you're in charge now. Because remember when he took over and everybody knew that he was the new one right, under yeah. Jack. All well, of the Jack yeah, all the former back. Hyperion employees yeah. viewed I don't know, him as maybe like the person who liberated. Word gets them. around quickly. Maybe, but they but they didn't seem to know that that Reese was still alive and that he was somewhere else on the planet. What ended up happening was, so, Vaughn had Pandora, which was actually probably the way better option because the Hyperion people were on crack or something they were just not in the right mind they were just like standing there no they took jack's statue and just wrote reese on it and it had no head <laughs> and then you just get the comment from reese that's like oh my god that's fucked up ew <laughs> i don't i feel uncomfortable right now and it was pretty weird it, it was pretty weird hey hey can we talk about how cute gordis is Oh, Gordis. Oh, yes. my gosh. That was Ian's child. I don't know. I was kind of mean to Gordis, but not really. Yeah, she was She was this uh, tiny little robot that um, gets Open introduced in the, the second. Yeah, so the, the overall plot of the series is um, after our group gets, like, accidentally kind of thrown together through, through circumstances beyond their control, um, they discover that uh, Atlas Corporation had this, like, secret Gordis project, and it was had something to do with opening a vault. Also, can I and just so... say that, like, I don't... There wasn't really any characters in this who I hated. Really? Yeah. Like, Even, like, Vasquez and August? Well, and... Vasquez... 
Valerie? Vasquez was a hoe, but, like, I don't know. I don't... Okay, no, the... I wasn't that mad at August. I don't know. He was John Albus at the end. But you, you were really, you were just like, don't trust August. I was like, okay. I don't like him. I don't like him. I, he doesn't like him. He, okay, listen. Even after they revealed that, like, the, the reason that they had been working with him to buy a vault, or to, no, to sell a vault key, was because it was all a con, you know? Yeah. And they, they just, they were just in it for the money. He still thought that Sasha who had been acting as his girlfriend as part of the con, he still thought that there was something there that they could still get together. And I was like, no, dude. Like, Remember when he was about to die and Sasha literally saved his ass? Yeah, that happened. When was when was that? That was on the last episode. No, the second one is four or five. It's okay. episode four or five, but... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, when when yeah. um when they were trying to get out of yeah, the... Yeah, uh, that was five. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I guess Except after that, that, he might have helped us, but I'm not a forgiving type, I guess. His mom was more... I don't know what his mom was doing. I just didn't understand the point of his mom, to be honest. I forgot she was the thing. I was just like, Valerie. Huh? I think she was I... kind of like... She was like the opposite of a deus ex machina. You know, she was like the the antagonist who has all the resources you know yeah. so they could like they could have her just pop in whenever they needed to create conflict in the story so i think i think that that's why she existed in this game yeah yeah okay so there was gordas yeah and so, then you had so gordas was the robot that like her the reason that she existed was to uh summon this vault yes um and that and nobody s- has ever gotten to yeah. or opened and and so, so we spend most of the series like gathering the upgrades for Gordis, and then, um, then eventually trying to save her when we, uh, ex- you know, do open the vault. And uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, that was also. Then there's two other robots, Ian. Yep, Loaderbot and oh yeah, and Dumpy. I almost forgot about Dumpy. Loaderbot was my favorite. I liked the Loaderbot. You see, oh my god. Yeah, because Loader Loaderbot, uh. Was pretty he much was there our, from the beginning. Yes, he was there from the start, and he never left left us. He kidnapped us, but he didn't leave us. <laughs> and he saved our butts like way, way oh more times God. than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really did. And oh my God, I thought I killed him. That was the worst thing in the world. When you got in the so, escape pod, so there's a part. There's the part where you um, are escaping from the Hyperion, and you're going into the pod, and you're like. And Reese is like, well, there isn't enough room for you, Loaderbot, so... Well, he didn't say it like that. Well, they didn't, and he was just like... He was like, I can't go, Loaderbot, because there's not enough room for both of us, and the Loaderbot just pushes him in and ejects it. Yeah, and... (laughs) Ian got so mad at me. I wasn't mad at you. No, Ian, you were mad at me. Remember? Okay, well, we both accidentally... Ian's killed two characters. I killed one. Well, I actually didn't even kill one because Loaderbot never died. Who did I kill? The guy up in space. Well, but that, no, that that's something uh. that happens no matter what. Yeah? So? No, you freaking killed the, um, when I told you to kill the one old guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he doesn't actually die. He, uh, because Valerie shows up, remember? Valerie shows up and yeah, shoots a rocket uh, launcher into the, into the building and everybody has to scatter. Fuck, well, okay, listen, and actually, I think Subashu is controlling Fiona at that point. Actually, you know what? Subashu. I take it back. The only person who killed someone was me. I killed Jack. I <laughs> killed Jack. And I did not. I did pretty good. I was no. being all masculine and like, oh, I'm going to. So speaking of out in space, though, yeah. I was really, really surprised that they killed off Scooter. Oh, my God. That they, so sad. That was... they just straight up killed Scooter because, like, um, Scooter has been a part of, you know, Borderlands 1 and 2. He's, you know, he's the one who, like, gives you all of the, the cars that you get. Um, You know, he's oh, been, baby. like, this main character. Yeah, he's, like, every, all of the fans love Scooter. And I was really surprised that Telltale was allowed to kill him off. And I told you, and it was because he wouldn't make out with him. No. That was totally. That's ridiculous. That was totally. Ugh. But, yeah, so I, I'm guessing from the fact that you really want a sequel that yeah. you would, that you would highly recommend this game yeah to people yeah i would agree i mean see i always have like the theory that jack's never dead i don't i don't think that fucker ever dies i'm sorry <laughs> i don't they can't do that but yeah who would, what, what where would 
your story be? Like, I don't know. Like, Well, I mean, like, yeah, Borderlands 1 didn't have who's Jack a, in it at all. Who would have... Who's a worse person than Handsome Jack? <laughs> no, literally, I want them to make a worse character. I want to see them do that. That would be pretty difficult. Because, He's like... mean to everybody. Yeah. No, he liked me. See, what I think, I think that he was being nice to you all that time to get you to go up there and, like, sit in the president's seat and everything and, you know, so that he could get into the um, Helios's computer system so that he could start his plan of getting all of the robot uh, skeletons into people's bodies so that he could control everybody. And so you were just, like, a pawn in his in his game. He wasn't actually, like, being nice to you for the I sake of being his... nice. I mean... That was that was a factor too, but like <laughs> the things he kept saying to me though, like it was like you remind me of me of when I was younger. That all like Stella, keep in mind that manipulative people will say anything I don't, to get you, you to do what, what they want. You know what? I was being a manic. I turned the hell on him. He did not see that coming. <laughs> Let me tell you something. After eating his pizza, no less. Oh yeah, I ate his pizza. Man, that's the biggest insult. That. No, Ian said that was the right option because the pe- because we thought that oh, they. Oh th- my god! That is one thing about the game, though, is oh oh, a lot of times like the dialogue options weren't super clear oh, what they god. actually were. You know, like when we were like, oh, maybe we maybe we order pizza. We thought like that you was give it to all the people. Yeah, like ordering pizza for the entire company. Kind I mean, of thing. we were asking Jack to do that. But it was like, it seemed like it was being presented as a choice yeah. of like, do you want to seem like the hard ass who's going to like get stuff done, but like everybody's going to be afraid of you? Or do you want to be like all friendly with everybody? No, but I had my time to like build up like Jack being really mean at the end. I mean, no, no. Reese being really mean to Jack at the end. And then I said, I'm sorry. Remember oh, right that? before, right before I know, killing him. I was so- yeah. <laughs> because I love, I love his personality. I love. Ooh. I think it's really funny how into, like, finding fan art of those two together Um, is. Go look up Rack. Spell that for everybody. R-H-A-C-K. You think that's funny? I I think it's really funny. Uh, Yeah. Also, also, oh, I was so mad because they kept on asking my boy Reese if if he wanted to date Sasha. I was like, no, he's gay. (laughs) And... uh, I thought I made that. Yeah, and and when we saw the final like statistic or whatever of like how many people, uh, you know, said that said that Reese wanted to be with Sasha or not, it was like, it was something like five percent or like whatever of, of people who <laughs> who said that they wouldn't be together. Because actually, okay, let's be. Out of all the fan art, it's usually Jack and Reese, and then Vaughn third wheeling, or it can be Reese. And Vaughn mm-hmm. with Jack third wheeling. It's never Vaughn and Jack. That'd be weird. I don't. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. That, no, it doesn't. Because Vaughn was never able to see Jack. What do you mean? I think they love each other. He loves his abs. Yeah, but like Vaughn, but Vaughn didn't know that Jack was a thing. I mean, yeah. even Vaughn wasn't even up there on the space station with us when Jack like revealed himself to everybody. You know. So, oh my god, true. Yeah, so Vaughn never saw any of this. Damn. Okay, but anyways. You know, they never really tried to push any romance like story plots on Fiona. They never did. I'm kind of proud of them for that. You know what I'm proud of? What? There's actual lesbians, guys. There's actual lesbians. Ah, not yeah. me trying to make my character gay. Just there was Yeah, a couple of the non player characters. Yes. Were, yeah, like this is my girlfriend. And then later on they're like, Yeah, we're getting married and it's all because of you guys. Yay. Oh my god, I'm crying. And then they invite us to the wedding. Oh man, they should have shown us the wedding. I oh wanted Oh my god, I would have been so sad. Oh, I also, love weddings. So that's like that's like the number one couple. Or you can have Loaderbot. Oh, Loaderbot and Gordis. Yes. They Gordis. are they yes. are adorable. Oh they're god. perfect together. Yes. <sighs> Uh, uh, like literally, Loaderbot comes in and says, "We have to fix her. Mm-hmm. We have to figure out." It. And then he saves her. And he was like, "So the, romantic." He's the only reason that the rest of the group gets together to also, save Gordis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's nobody for Dumpy. Dumpy's mine. Dump, Dumpy's all alone. Was Dumpy fixed at the end? I Dumpy think so. I saw Dumpy flying. Dumpy, yeah, Dumpy didn't do. Sh- 
I don't know what Dumpy did in that. No. I don't. He was just there. That's okay. I mean, Dumpy wasn't super important. Dumpy was just like it couldn't even talk. You know, it was this tiny little robot that flew around, and we used yeah. it to scout out rooms when we were scared. If <laughs> you know, you know what I want to know. What? What happened to that creepy ass museum guy? Where did he go? <laughs> Wait, what's what's up with Shade? Where did he go? Uh, well, let's see. This happens. Oh uh, my god! Oh no, this happens after Borderlands Two. So I actually have no idea what happens to Shade after this. Like he probably just continues with his life, you know. Why He's... was he relevant to the story? Uh, he just happened to own the museum where they were meeting. Yeah, I know, but it just that was weird. He was scary. Yeah. I thought he was the one who kidnapped us, like the whole fucking time. <laughs> yeah, we. So so the. The whole uh, game, like we said, was was Reese and Fiona telling their story to a third party. And this person is, like, masked. And, um, you know, so we spend most of the time, like, not knowing who they are. And we kept trying to come up with theories about who this character was. Because it was pretty clear that, like, they knew us somehow, you know. Otherwise, yeah. like, they wouldn't be interested in this whole story. And, yeah, one of our theories that we kept coming back to was, what if it's Shade? Because I think mostly because he was the only character who hadn't oh popped up recently, but also I, they had fairly similar hats. Also, what was really scary throughout this whole game was that at the end, me and Ian started thinking the same exact thing. Like, it was really synced. I was like, oh, I would have picked that too. Mm. Oh, I would have picked that. When we both thought the thing was the same thing, we were like, except for... Which, which thing? I don't know. It was like... Oh, no. We were both thinking of zero... To go kick. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. That was, we were like zero. And mm -hmm. then you were like, yeah, no, no shit. Um, I'm actually, I'm not sure if we had any choice on who we had in our final party because we had so many people who weren't available. Because we killed. Because we either, yeah, killed, killed them, them or pissed them off or we didn't have enough money to like hire other vault hunters or things like that. Um, and I never even clicked on August and he was the only person that was left yeah, that we had didn't... looked at. So I'm not sure, like, I I don't know if August would have been willing to come with us or not. I don't know if we pissed him off or not. Mm, I don't think we did. I don't think we did. We saved him. I, he saved him. I don't well, know. at least Sasha saved him, so. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Sasha replanted character. That was a whole, oh my god. I like, yeah, I really like how we evolved, because this is like the first um, live stream series that we've ever yeah. done. So we, we, we definitely evolved a lot from the first episode where everybody was like yelling at me for like you know making the wrong decisions or whatever or you know stuff like that um to you know the two of us just like passing the controller back and forth and like you know letting the other pe person yeah. make the decisions yeah it, it felt a lot better i think it did during the last few episodes and then during the first episode also yeah. up in the comments people were telling me not to trust jack you know where that <laughs> got me almost killed by him Excuse me. That was such a man. Your your kids just screwed me over. Well, I mean, if you didn't trust Jack, then he wouldn't have been able to kill you. You know what I mean? I don't think he would have. He wouldn't have been. You know what? Even if I was being his bitch, he can't kill me. Like I don't know what he was trying to do when he was actually trying to kill me because he know he does he understand that? I don't think he cared at that point that he would die as well. I mean, it's like at the it's final like, moments. He sure it's like moment. heart. It, it's like... it's like Harry Potter at the end when he decides that he needs to kill Voldemort, even though he, you know, killing Voldemort, oh he needs to kill himself. So he did oh. that. He was willing to die for and it. And then that bitch was in heaven. That was so dumb. Oh, <laughs> I should reread those books. I've never read them. I've uh, seen the movies out of order. Well, that's the way to do it for sure. Yeah. yeah no. Well, it's it's an easy plot. You know, everybody knows what happens. Did you know that I accidentally told my mom that Snape died before she got to the part where Snape died? Damn, that's rude. Yeah. I told my mom that Han Solo died up in the new Star Wars movie <laughs> before she even sat up. Like, well, no regrets. Oh, yeah. I knew you were going to hate that when, as soon as I saw the movie. I was oh, like, I can't I wait till was, Stella watches no, this. I really liked it, though, because, like, I don't know. You looked funny. You looked constipated. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we're getting a little off topic here yeah. um i think i think that's about all that we have to say about tales from the borderlands yes definitely if you are interested in it um i think it's a lot more accessible than like the rest of the borderlands games you know because you don't have to be into like i'm playing number two at the RPGs. moment RPGs. yeah so 
I can I know what's happening. Now. You don't you don't have to be good at like shooters. You don't have to spend all the time that you would in you know an RPG like optimizing your character and everything, um, the way that you do in the regular Borderlands games. Um, but it's got like the same kind of humor and it's got a good story. So um, yeah, uh, either either pick up the game uh, and play it yourself or uh, go check out our series of uh, of episodes of it. Um, Either way, it'll take about the same amount of time because we did not cut out anything. No, we didn't. Nope. Except, really? Are you sure? At the beginning, where you messed up really badly that one time? Nope. I think I kept it in there. Oh, that's I think. scary. Yeah. Um. So, thanks for listening, everybody. This has been an episode of Second Opinion. If you have any feedback for us on this episode send an email to the nexus tv at gmail.com or find us on twitter at the nexus tv uh, i have been ian r buck you can find me on twitter as ian r buck and i am stella cannon and you can find me at punk Stell. and yeah if you uh if you have any ideas for things that we can review in the future um let us know or if you have like played a video game or you know bought uh, a phone or something recently that you want to uh, help us review um we would love to have you on as a guest as well thanks for listening everybody have a good one <laughs>